Okay, so as promised, let me uh, introduce the concept of uh, eddies uh, and how uh, we are going to worry about their transport. And as I said, in the full models, uh, they are explicitly resolved because eddies are uh, most is, are they are processes in the system that produce these small scale high frequency features we call eddies but when we look at them we have to separate them out using uh, techniques like this so we have to be careful about uh, what we mean by saying we will parameterize eddies for example if you have a coarse resolution model which is not uh, able to capture the scales at which these eddies occur then you have to be para they have to be parameterized at least in terms of their uh, transport uh, of momentum humidity temperature energy uh, and so on okay so uh, zonally averaged meridional uh, energy transport is vector u which is obviously just v uh, times density of the medium could be ocean or atmosphere and mass specific uh, specific energy which is energy per unit mass so we have uh, define average of any quantity let's say energy uh, could be potential latent kinetic whatever uh, is averaged over some time uh, 1 over tau which is t1 to t2 uh, a times dt which is a very simple averaging technique uh, and we do spatial averaging represented by square brackets this we represent by uh, over bars which is very common 1 over 2 pi so we are on a sphere 0 to 2 pi a d lambda where lambda is the longitude of course you can also average or part of the sphere but we are looking for net northward transport so we go from 0 to 2 pi what do we do after that we define transient eddies deviations around the time mean as the quantity a at any instant minus a bar so that's the deviation in time uh, from the long-term average or average over t1 to t2 we could be doing uh, weekly monthly annual whatever De depends on the particular problem you are looking at and we represent the spatial uh, deviation from the spatial average as a star equal to again instantaneous value uh, minus the spatial average uh, the zonal mean so we are looking at deviations from the zonal mean here okay so by definition then the uh, a prime transient term uh, has to go to zero when you have average over time tau and the spatial average a star spatial average of a star has to go to zero as well so what are we interested in basically we are interested in transports let's say v times t which is the temperature transport v times q is the humidity uh, transport v times uh, e is the energy transport and so on so in general we are looking at uh, averages of a times b because we are looking at meridional transport in the annual mean or at some time scale uh, should it should become equal to average of uh, remember this is time average uh, a bar plus a prime times b bar plus b prime because we split everything into the time average and the transient part um, so we can uh, multiply those and separate out a bar b bar plus a bar times b prime plus a prime times b bar plus a, a prime b prime so we average these quantities over time and by our definition uh, a b prime average goes to zero and a prime average goes to zero so we are only left with a bar b bar so time average of a bar b bar is still a bar b bar they are already averaged in time plus a prime b prime time averaged obviously just because time average of a prime is zero and time average of b prime is zero the time average of a prime b prime need not be zero if this is called temporal covariance if they are uh, correlated then their product will not go to zero if they're completely uncorrelated then they will individually go to zero and uh, their product will also go to zero so 
we can now write a bar b bar and a prime b prime in terms of spatial average as well so we can write uh, similarly as we uh, did here uh, so this is uh, a bar plus spatial average of a bar plus time average of a star just make sure you're following we are doing spatial averaging and time averaging and we are looking at deviations from time average and spatial average so a bar can be written as spatial average of a bar plus the time average of a star which is the spatial deviation similarly b bar is b bar spatial average plus b star bar plus a prime b prime bar okay so this gives us spatial average of a bar multiplied by spatial average of b bar plus a bar square bracket b bar star plus a bar star times b bar <laughs> so many terms plus a bar star plus b bar star plus a prime b prime bar okay so so many bars nice right so that is the term those are the terms we are uh, dealing with so again taking average we end up with uh, this is the same thing I'm writing here again to look at these terms so a bar b bar bar is that a b bar is this long expression so when we do spatial average of the a bar a times b bar we end up with uh, a bar time average b bar uh, sorry a bar spatial average b bar spatial average plus this has to go to zero when you do spatial average we're doing spatial average of this one by definition spatial average of this will go to zero by definition spatial average of this goes to zero so we are now dealt with spatial average of a bar star times b bar star so the product doesn't have to go to zero that's the spatial uh, covariance plus our original term temporal covariance averaged over uh, space okay looks complicated but just go through it and make sure you're following the term it's very simple linear algebra uh, so spatial average of a bar and b bar plus sp uh, spatial average of a bar star times b bar star plus spatial average of a prime b prime bar so the zonal and temporal mean of the product quantity of a b consists of the product of the means a bar spatial average and b bar spatial average of the respective individual quantities a and b plus the zonal covariance between the temporal means a bar and b bar plus the zonal mean of the temporal covariance of a prime and b prime bar so remember we are looking for zonal mean meridional transport so we are always averaging in the zonal mean as we said here okay so that's what we mean by these zonal covariance in time and space so, sorry zonal covariance and temporal covariance and their averages so net net we end up with spatial averages of v bar t bar which is our uh, total time average zonal mean meridional transport which is split into the mean transport so mean meridional velocity mean zonal mean meridional velocity times zonal mean meridional temporal mean temperature which is the mean transport plus what is called the uh, uh, stationary eddy so this is uh, averaged in time but it is the spatial eddies averaged zonally as well so it is the stationary eddy and this is the v prime t prime bar averaged zonally that's the transient eddy so if you look at maps of these terms without the spatial or zonal averaging here is an example I took from the paper which I forgot to put in here let me put that right now and uh, redo that so here we are copying the link and uh, putting it right there so that the authors of the work don't get cheated okay 
so there we go I save it I come back to the figure and show you that oops we are looking at December to January uh, uh, means northern hemisphere winter uh, because th that's when the, the equator to uh, pole temperature gradients are strong uh, and the eddy activity is strong in the winter hemisphere as well um, so that's have also averaged over 1970 to 2009 so time average and uh, spatially not averaged uh, here so vertically integrated kinetic energy of the 3 to 10 day bandpass filtered transient eddies so the prime in time is here uh, over the 3 to 10 day average so you can think of it as synoptic scale or a weather time scale it shows that there are basically very low uh, gradients or eddy uh, activity in the low latitudes but when we go to high latitudes um, those terms are strong so vertically integrated kinetic energy is strong here and if we look at the absolute mean value of meridional temperature gradient vertically averaged here we are not zonally averaging but for convenience we are looking at vertically averaged quantities so you can see the correspondence between integrated vertical uh, eddy kinetic energy and the m vertically integrated meridional temperature gradients so to get across these strong gradients you create instabilities and eddies I will not talk about the southern hemisphere which is slightly different uh, because southern ocean is a channel um, and in E we are looking at vertically integrated uh, let me put the pointer back on vertically integrated moist static energy flux convergence by transient eddies so you can see there is convergence there is divergence across these gradients uh, again different sto story here but you can still see zonal uh, features of uh, convergence divergence similar to here and F is the vertically integrated moist static energy flux convergence by stationary eddies so that means they are uh, not varying uh, so stationary eddies are uh, deviations from the zonal mean so you can think of them as semi-permanent features in space in time they are varying uh, here those are transient eddies these are stationary eddies which means in space they seem anchored over there okay so the, there is a physics behind it coming off of the uh, Asian continent and North American continent you get some uh, special processes which create these local maxima uh, that you see here uh, in the uh, vertically integrated fields uh, sorry vertically integrated moist static energy flux convergence okay so easier way to see is this uh, the covariance so if V star bar is less than zero as is shown here uh, T bar star is less than zero because we are going from uh, colder temperatures to warmer temperatures uh, so then V bar star uh, T bar star uh, spatially average is greater than uh, zero so they are correlated and they have a net uh, transport uh, this is the other way where V bar star is greater than zero and T bar star is greater than zero then again you get uh, net transport because the spatial average of their product is not zero that's by stationary eddies and this is transient eddies where you are looking at V prime is greater than zero and T prime is greater than zero so the net uh, the eddy in the uh, in time is uh, positive and temperature uh, change is positive or they are both negative in which case their spatial temporal average doesn't go to zero so they are uh, spatially uh, co-varying and temporally co-varying and here are the examples schematic illustration of stationary and transient eddies in the atmosphere so if uh, V is going in this direction and temperature is uh, increasing and V is going in that direction and temperature is decreasing then uh, there is a systematic correlation so you can see that the uh, uh, 
transport is shown here to be southward and northward so there is a net latitudinal transport by the stationary eddies here and there is a front like feature here so the eddies uh, creating oscillations in time so at t equal to t0 t equal to t1 so this is not spatial this is temporal so again here is v prime and t prime and you can see that v prime t prime are not zero so the uh, covariance is giving us net transport okay so i hope that's clear so if they are uh, if temperature is changing uh, uh, out of phase or uncorrelated to uh, eddy velocities in stationary and transient eddies then uh, covariances may be uh, null and you will not get net transport. This has become quite long so let me stop this here and uh, add the details of the actual transports in the real world in the next podcast. Okay.